Low temperatures don't stop me from running or cycling outside, but the chill sometimes gets to me and that made me wonder just how cold is too cold and what's the right thing to wear when it's freezing out there. And what better way to find out than to go and cycle in one of the extreme environment chambers at the University of Portsmouth. We have three different laboratories that basically can go from about minus 25 to plus 50. We can control um, humidity, we have two immersion facilities and we can go to the top of Everest uh, in each of the labs. Before getting into a fresh minus 22 degrees, the skin temperature of my hands is measured with an infrared camera. It's around 26 degrees, which is quite normal, and that means I'm good to get on the bike. My hand temperature is being measured several times during the short cycle, and it doesn't take long until I feel the biting cold in my fingers. You started to cycle, and your hand temperatures, which is what we were concentrating on, very quickly went down to around about 15 degrees Celsius and they stayed there. Even though you were cycling, you didn't manage to warm your hands up. You were only cycling for around about eight minutes. Um, the trouble with the hands is they shut down very quickly in terms of their blood flow, so the temperature falls very quickly. And the major source of heat and temperature for the hands is blood flowing into the hand. And once that, get, once that gets cut off, then the temperature will just fall. And they really the best way of rewarming them is to get blood to go back into them. But to do that, the body must be warm. So it's really quite difficult because what the body will do, it will sacrifice the extremities in order to protect the deep tissues of the body, the important tissues like the heart and the brain. Whilst in still air, my hands stay pretty much the same. But when some wind is added, I realise the situation might become a bit more drastic with my left hand feeling frozen. Over the period you cycled, your hands stayed very cold, and then we added the wind, which people will understand as wind chill. And of course, what that does is any boundary of warm air that you've managed to put round the body um, as heat leaves the body, the wind comes along and blows that away. And so your temperature falls again. So once we added the wind, your hand temperatures went down from about 15 down to about eight or nine degrees Celsius. So that's, that's pretty cold. The important thing for somebody like a cyclist is that once your skin temperatures start to get below about 15 degrees Celsius, then you start to lose dexterity, strength, ability to manipulate things. Now, that has implications for things like changing gear, braking, steering. And so um, we would worry um, about your ability to, to bike handle, not so much your ability to stay warm internally, but actually your you know, fine motor capability for actually steering and, and cycling a bike. And as that cold gets deeper, it starts to affect superficial nerves and muscles, and that gets much worse, become very physically incapacitated. A reduction in superficial nerve and muscle functions can occur in as little as 20 to 25 minutes, and for most people, the major problem in the cold is the effect on extremities. So what does Mike recommend to wear when moving in the bitter cold? The best way of protecting the extremities is a combination between clothing insulation and physical activity to keep blood going into the, um, into the extremities. The trouble is, if you wear too much clothing uh, when you exercise, you then start to sweat, and that water goes into the clothing and destroys the insulation. So there's a very fine balance between staying warm enough to keep blood flow going into the extremities to keep them functional and being too warm that you start sweating and then you lose all your insulation. So that's why it's better to have layers um, because you can change your insulation incrementally rather than, for example, having a great big puffer jacket that is either on or off. That doesn't give you very much flexibility in terms of your insulation. It's quite a good idea to have some insulation down the forearms as well because the muscles which control the fingers and the hands are mostly located in the forearm. One of the tips is if you have stayed reasonably warm, if you put your fingertips onto your lips, if your fingertips feel cold then they're, they're relatively shut down. So it's then a matter of just adjusting your insulation to keep your body warm but not too warm. Um, and actually um, headgear is quite a good way of doing that. Well, after the rather extreme experience in there, I feel out here it's not as cold as I thought before, 
And I was also told that when you work out in the cold, you actually burn more calories. And that for me is a very good reason to have a hot chocolate right now. Nicole Ries, for that's Solent.